Hello, everybody. The uh, tonight was a sellout. Fifteen thousand two hundred thirty-eight. The gate was uh, two point five million. That's U.S. <clears throat> the fight of the night was the main event. The um, performance of the night went to Devontae Smith and Montana De La Rosa. So congratulations to all of them. They all won $50,000. Who's got the first question? What's up, buddy? What's going on? Dana, obviously a, you know, a crazy day for you, I'm sure. First and foremost, can you tell us the latest on Rob? We saw that he's out of surgery, but what can you tell us about his Yeah, that's it. He's out of surgery, and basically what, what they told me was his, uh, you know, his colon and his intestines had popped out. And they don't think that he didn't do anything yesterday, so they don't think it was anything that he did yesterday. They think he's had it for a while, and it's been popping in and out. The scary part is, is that if he took a shot to the stomach while that was popping, he could have died. I mean, he, he could rupture the colon, and, and uh, you know, you become septic, and that's that's not good. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. This worked out. You know, it's great the way this worked out. Actually, to find out that this kid who had this problem and was unhealthy and we were able to get it fixed, and they think he'll be out four to six weeks. I was talking to uh, Matt Damon tonight, and he disagrees. He said he's had hernia surgery, and anybody who said four to six weeks is ridiculous. That, that, that's not right. So we'll see how this thing plays out for Rob. Uh, I don't know. With the late shuffle, of course, you had to offer refunds. You said it was a sellout, but I mean... Do you know what kind of financial impact it had on the gate? I mean, were there returns and resales? At what, you, how, were you at the fight tonight? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see an open seat? I did. I love Australia, man. <laughs> this place is insane. It's awesome. No, the fans are incredible, man. They, you know, they showed up. We, we, there was a big sign out in front that said, you know, the main event is off and you, you can get a refund on your tickets if you want. And people didn't want a refund. They wanted to see fights. So the place was packed. You'd have, you'd have never thought the main event was gone. Yeah. So incredible. How about pay-per-view wise? I, mean, I imagine it couldn't have been great for pay-per-view sales. Do you have any, any indications? The, pay, the pay-per-view wasn't bad. The pay-per-view wasn't bad at all. So it was a good night, you know. Um, I didn't sleep at all, but you know, other than that, it was, it, was, it was a great night. Yeah, it worked out. Everything worked out. You know, you listen, at the end of the day, you, you, you know, you're, you're going to hear people a bitch, and there's going to be people that don't want to buy it, and they don't have to. But, uh, you know, most fight fans want to see some fights, and, you know, we did pretty. We did really well, considering what happened to us. Yeah, no doubt. Last thing in this situation, uh, of course, we got to see how long Rob is going to be out. But does Kelvin keep his place as the number one contender? I mean, is he guaranteed the next title shot or whatever happens? I mean, is he involved in well, it? Well, we have to see how this thing plays out uh, with the champ and see how long he's going to be out. And you know what I mean? Um, and we'll go from there. Nice. And then just lastly for me, can we get your thoughts on the main event? How, how Israel Adesanya looked? I mean, a, a big win for him over a legend. But what did you think of his performance, and, and where do you see him at his position as career? It was fun, man. That first round was like a kung fu movie, you know. Uh, it was a fun fight to watch, very fun, with, with two guys who are incredibly talented. I, I was saying yesterday, any, any odds makers that makes Anderson Silva 7-1 to is out of their mind. I mean, the guy is always taking care of himself. He's a great martial artist, and, um, you know, that was a fun fight. But Israel went in with a sold-out house tonight. You know, a lot of pressure on him to go in against the guy. You know, Anderson's 42 years old. He's supposed to go in and beat Anderson. You know, but those, those are the those are the kind of positions you're in that have, you got a lot of pressure on you when you go in. Anderson even said, "All the pressure's on him. There's none on me." And uh, it was a fun fight. I think he did a good job against nobody. I, I don't know how people can't give Anderson Silva the credit that this guy deserves. Seven to one underdog. Um, He's a crafty veteran. He's very talented. He's got knockout power. And if it went to the ground, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and has submitted a lot of guys who are uh, great jiu-jitsu, uh, you know, black belts. So people are nuts counting him out. Uh, Dan, I'm just wondering, with Israel, he did a great job during the fight. We did a lot of interviews. Uh, has a lot of skills when it comes to promotion. I'm just wondering your thoughts on him compared to some of the other rising stars that we've seen in the past, guys like Conor McGregor, other people in the UFC. Yeah, um, you know, the kid's got him. I mean, he's, he's, he's got that, uh, you know, not only is he talented in, in the octagon, he's talented outside of it too, you know. His interviews are exciting. He's an interesting guy. He's fun to watch. And uh, I think he's got a really bright future here.
Uh, Callum was in the back with a belt on his shoulder. I'm just wondering your reaction to seeing Callum walking around with a belt today at the event and sort of ringside. That was Cejudo's belt that he borrowed, uh, you know. Yeah, it was cute. <laughs> Just finally, I mean, you mentioned that it was a sellout and you know people didn't refund really their tickets. Uh, a couple of times we've tried to have uh, you know champions defend the title here. Would you be open to having Rob possibly defend his title in Australia in the future, possibly in 2019, 2020, if he's still the champ? Australia is, is, is where he's from. This is the motherland for him, but it hasn't been very nice to him, this, this country. He, he hasn't had the best of luck here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll see how the timing plays out on this stuff. But yeah, I, uh, yeah. And listen, I'll, I'll come to Australia every weekend, man. I love this place. The people are incredible. You know, the fans are amazing. Um, except for the guy that wrote Fuck UFC over on that street the other day. <laughs> except for that guy, this place is great. Hey, Dan, I was just wondering, like, sort of historically, uh, in terms of the events here in Australia, it's usually been like pay-per-view fight night, pay-per-view fight night. Do you think because of this situation, one of the blessings could be that maybe the next event is a pay-per-view here in Australia. I'm not sure so what the, what the future schedule is. Point to come I don't know. Out. I don't think that's a, a strategic thing where we're going pay-per-view fight night. But, um, you know, if you look at the fights that we've brought here so far, I mean, this, this fight tonight that happened and the main event was supposed to happen, we brought Ronda Rousey here. To this day, Mark Hunt versus Bigfoot Silva is one of the greatest heavyweight fights I've ever seen. And, it was insane. Every time we come here, the fights are really, really good. It's, it's, I believe it has a lot to do with the energy here in Australia and, and the fans and um, fighters feed off that, man. They do. This is, this is one of the funnest places in the world to come fight. And just to clarify that question, I meant if Rob ended up on the next card in here, because obviously if Rob's defending his belt, but surely that's not going to be a fight. No. I know, but we're laying out, as, as we lay out the year, you know, we have most of this year laid out already. And I don't think one of those was Australia to come back with, with a title fight. But who knows? Maybe we add Australia again and, and, and try Rob again for a third time here. Um, just in terms of Israel, as far as what's next, do you think there's any chance that he sort of gets this title shot over Kelvin Gastelum? I know there's unfinished business there, but at the press there was talk that, you know, this was for, for the number one Yeah, I, well, I think it's, it is. This was for the number one contender spot, but we got to see how this plays out with, um, with Robin and how he's feeling. Uh, just last one for me, uh, Jimmy Krug, you're obviously very high on him at the press conference. What did you think of his win? I think he looked damn good, and uh, especially against a really, really tough guy. Um, I think there's only been three people that have ever finished him out of 40-something fights. So I, I didn't agree with the stoppage. I thought it was a bad stoppage. A lot of those shots were hitting him on the arm, but he was obviously hurt. Um, but the fight could have gone a little longer. We could have saw a little bit more Krug. Bad stoppage, in my opinion. Hey Dan, um, at, in the cage, Anderson said he'd like to fight in Curitiba, Brazil, later this year. Do you think yep. that's possible? Yeah, it's definitely possible. We're still working on that card. And what sort of person would you put him in there against? Obviously, this Israel fight sort of sold in their styles, but who in the top ten would you like to see him up against? Who makes sense to him at this point? I don't know. Tuesday we'll have a matchmaking meeting, and I'll have to look at it and figure it out. And your thoughts on the Conor McGregor link? The Conor tweeted out he'd like to fight Anderson. It would be an honour. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't like that fight at all. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, just to clarify, Kelvin was back here. He said that um, there had been some talks, but he was he had received some payment for today, right? What, who? Kelvin. Kelvin? Yeah. He has not yet. Yeah, but he will. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, Dana. So hi. I just wanted to know um, what you thought about uh, Montana De La Rosa's fight um, against Nadia. And then when she was back here, she said that she wanted to fight Paige Van Zandt. And I just want to know what you think. Yeah, I like it. And what I thought about her, she got 50 grand tonight, so uh, I thought it was great. She looked, she looked dynamite tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in a lot of uh, a number of the divisions, and in this uh, middleweight division is, is now uh, fits that characterization as well. Do you think at any point the UFC would consider outlining specific criteria for determining who the next number one contender is, specifically? Because you guys I call yourself we, a league. I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, you did in this fight, but it's, it's, it tends to be rare, and there is, it seems to be a lot of uncertainty we go into these fights. How, how does it tend to be rare? Well, like, lightweight's a good example. Okay. Where Ferguson won the interim title and then was stripped, and now we're not sure. He got him. hurt. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, not disagreering that he won the title. Then what are you saying? I'm saying that a lot of fighters feel like they 
fight for a number one contender, fight, win, and then something else right, happens. But, it, but it's all later. based on who's healthy, who's ready to go, and who's not. Because the machine has to keep rolling. We have X amount of fights every year, and if you can't uh, defend, listen, when you win an interim title, it means you're next. If you can't go next, it means you're out, and somebody else goes next. I think that's the criteria. That's what we always do. All right, thank you. Disagree? Uh, I, I think a lot of fighters disagree, I and mean, we hear a lot of fighters. Fighters disagree about, with uh, everything I say. <laughs> I'm not asking if the fighters do, do you disagree? I, I would disagree with that, yeah. And, and why? How would you disagree with that? So Colby Covington won the interim title. He was next. He couldn't fight. He turned down the fight with Tyron Woodley. So what am I supposed to wait for Colby Covington to show up and fight? That's not how it works. Tony, Tony's next. He's got the fight. He's got the belt. Trips blows his knee out and has to have, you know, reconstructive knee surgery. We're gonna wait for him? No, we're gonna go. We're gonna move on. But Tony Ferguson fought on the same card as the unification fight between. Conor McGregor and Habib, so he yeah. was ready to fight for the undisputed title. Right, but he missed he missed his opportunity. We already made the fight. He was out. Now, now he'll be next. You're wrong, sir. Sorry, Danny. Just um, just on interim titles, uh, could we spoke about maybe taking a break till November? And uh, Cowboy Serrano was here talking about a potential Conor McGregor fight. I'm just wondering what will, what's the lightweight <coughs> division sort of look like for you at the moment, and if Khabib does sit out. Till uh, November, would you actually entertain the idea of bringing in an interim title? Well, like this gentleman just said, you know, I, I just said, guys can't sit out and wait that long when you have the title. You can't do it. So if, if that's true and he's going to do that, then we'd have to figure out something else. And, and, you know, you start looking at whether it's Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson, or, uh, you know, one of these other guys. Whoever, whoever wants to, when opportunity knocks, answer the door. And uh, we'll see how this thing plays out. That's the criteria. Uh, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, somebody definitely doesn't want to sit out with Ben Askren. With his attitude and the entertainment he's already brought to the UFC now, particularly on Twitter, even though he hasn't already fought, do you wish he brought him in a little bit earlier? Say that again. Askren wants to fight. He wants to fight everybody. Am I looking to do what? Do you wish you brought him into the UFC a little bit earlier? Oh. I think right now is the perfect time. Seriously, I think right now is the perfect time. Listen, this guy cruised around and he fought in different promotions, and you know uh, he's 27 and 0 now, and he's here, and people are excited about him being here now. And let's let's see let's see what happens. One more for me. Obviously, China and Japan are bigger than plans. How about Southeast Asia? Is there any plans to come back there in 2019? Off the top of my head, I don't know the answer to that question right now. Yeah, Dan here now, mate. Uh, a lot of the, uh, just straight up the back, mate. A lot of the uh, local fighters always ask me directly straight in front of you, Dan. <laughs> Go out with the cameras, buddy. All right. Yeah, oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> a lot of the local fighters are always asking me. You know, what's the pathway to the UFC? Is there a certain promotion that you, you know, you tend to look at locally? Or, you know, is there, is there a way that we can tell these guys exactly what they should be doing? Yeah, if you're out there fighting in one of, these, one of these organizations, no matter where it is, if it's out here or anywhere else in the world, and you keep cracking off wins, and then you beat somebody that we, we, we think is, you know, good enough to fight them, then we'll, uh, we'll definitely take a look at you. And right now, the, the best way to get into the UFC right now is either looking for a fight or uh, the Contender Series. So, um, and the Ultimate Fighter. All three of those are coming back this summer, so um, there's plenty of opportunities for guys. Dana, uh, Kelvin and Israel both took a shot at Rob tonight in their own interviews for not turning up to work. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what you make of that. And listen. The, the, the guy got hurt. He's a human being. His, his colon and his intestine popped through his stomach. I think we can give him a pass on not showing up to work. And I'm, I'm glad that, he, uh, that, that it happened because they think it's been there for a while and they think it's been bothering him for a while and he didn't realize what it was. And uh, super dangerous. This is, this is something legit. This is something real. This isn't some bullshit like some of the guys recently. Who, who have turned down fights. This is as legit as really you can get. And his family 
was fighting with him because he didn't want to go to the hospital till five o'clock this morning. He was actually going to uh, fight, push through it and fight. And thank God he didn't. So, yeah. There, there's guys out there you can ridicule. Rob, Rob Whitaker isn't one of them. I was going to say, you mentioned too before about the show's got to go on. So obviously, around the middleweight division, there's a lot of guys who want to fight for a belt. How long would you yeah. want him till, till he's back? Well, hopefully, this thing's only going to be four to six weeks, according to the doctors. So, um, you know, he's in great shape right now. They said he had the best camp ever. His cut was easy. Everything was perfect. And then this thing happened to him. So he's in great shape. And let's see how long it takes him to recover from this. And, uh, and we'll make something as fast as we can. Did I not? Yep. Cock out of France and Shane Young. Over here. Yep. Cock out of France and Shane Young both had great performances tonight on the prelims. What did yep. you make of them? Yeah, no, great. Great fights. I mean, th there were some really good performances tonight. And, um, yeah, I thought he looked good. And those two and Israel both from New Zealand. Is there any possibility of returning there this year or in 2020? To, to New Zealand? Yes. Well, look at Israel now. I mean, who, 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 yeah, everything's... Everything's possible. Kai and Shane and Dan yeah, Hooker, there's a bunch of guys there now. I agree. You, I, I mean, you know the answer to that question. The answer to that question is yes. I mean, th this, this part of the world right now, I was saying this the other day, you know, when we first started coming over here and building this market, you know, we had Elvis Sinisic and um, uh, Parosh. You know, those were like the only two guys that I knew of that, that fought. Now it's, it's blown up so much. Not only are there tons of guys fighting, there are tons of talented people here, you know. Um, people who are gonna who are gonna climb up into the ranks and possibly become world champions someday. So this is a great market. I mean, if you ever I, I was talking about the market the other day when I was doing all the PR leading up to the fight. If tonight didn't prove what an incredible, amazing market this is, nothing will. You know, the main event with the Australian champion falls out and this place was packed like nothing happened to the card. It was awesome. Love it. I'd literally come here every weekend if we could. Hey, Dana, right in front of you. Yep. Um, now, I just want to go back on the Jimmy Crude and Sam Elvey fight. Now, I thought that was inter interesting because I agree with you, it was a bad stoppage, but Jimmy Crude tried the walk away. What, what did you think of that? Did well, you... no, the ref screwed that up too. Yeah. The ref jumped in there and, and he thought the ref was breaking it up. The ref did a really, really bad job. Real poor refereeing in that fight. And, um, you know, when something like that happens, it could have cost Crude the fight because if Alvey got back up and, you know, um, and then he, he, he goes to stop it too soon, then, then he stops it too early, in my, in my opinion. Um, it happens sometimes and, uh, you know, it sucks, for, it sucks for Sam. Were you surprised about the crowd reaction in the main event because there was a lot of silver chants out there when, when Israel, I thought there would be more support for Israel, but there would seem to be... Uh, a lot of support for a legend. Yeah, I, I don't because I think it's it's I think everybody respects Anderson Silva so much. He's in there at 42 years old and and uh, seven to one underdog and all that stuff. I, you know, it, it's it's hard not to cheer for a, for a living legend. Um, now, when and I don't think it doesn't mean that they don't like Israel. No, it's just yeah, it's I, Anderson. It was a bit of a split because as soon as the Silva chant came in, then a dizzy chant <laughs> right. came in, so it was it was a weird one. Um, with when the main event got pulled, uh, we were obviously all disappointed, but when, how did the decision for Bonetto and, uh, and Mariano to move up to, to co-main event, how did that come about? Because the guys called me from Vegas and said, what do you, you want to do? And I said, this is a no-brainer. Lando gets, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Tell me the last shitty fight you saw that kid in. It doesn't exist. The kid's an animal. I, I love the way that kid fights, and, and, and that's the thing. He had said something to me about being on, 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 you know, I'm on Fight Pass, but you're the main event on Fight Pass, you know what I mean? What people don't realize is there's actually a marketing budget for Fight Pass, so all the attention goes to him. Then there's a marketing budget for the, for the guy who headlines uh, ESPN, right? Then there's a marketing budget for whoever headlines and co-main events pay-per-view. So everybody gets a shitload of money spent on them so we, put, we make sure that we put the best guys the, or, or the ones that we think are going to put on the best fights in those main event positions. That's how that works. So it's no disrespect. If you end up on, on Fight Pass, there's a lot of money being thrown uh, at your name. 
just a final one from me. Uh, Anderson said after in the in the octagon after his fight that he wants to go back and fight in Brazil. Yep. Uh, is Silver versus Wyman three something you'd be interested in? Um. Yeah. I mean, I'd do that fight again if they both wanted to do it. It's a fun fight. Makes sense. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. How are you? Very well. Um, are you able to rule out at all in the next three, four months of ever stripping Rob of the title? To rule out stripping him in the next three months? No, he's he's going to be he's going to be better in four to six weeks. When we have a guy who blows an ACL or says I'm going to take some time off or things like this, th th those we look at how long the guy's going to be off. Then we look at whether you know these other guys should have to wait. Time, time is not your friend in this business. So when one guy decides he wants to take time, it's not fair to everybody else that is in there grinding and fighting. So um, Rob is looking like four to six weeks. We'll see how his progression goes, and we'll go from there. Would it hurt you more stripping him than you have with some of the other strips you've had to do? It's never fun to strip somebody in the title. Yeah. It's never fun. They worked hard to get there. You know, they went through a lot of, a lot of shit to earn that title, and uh, it's never fun to take it away. From anybody. Uh, last one for me. At the end of the first round of the main event, when the crowd was losing their mind, right at the end of the first round, everyone jumped to their feet. And I think uh, you and Matt Damon were the same. Yeah. Can you just tell us what you were saying to each other? That was just like, ho holy shit. We were saying what everybody else was. This is awesome. What a great round. It was like a kung fu movie. Um, you know, it was just, it's fun to see two super talented guys, you know, the up and coming kid and the, and the, and the living legend you know, go at it like they did. Fun. And then it, when you think about it, you know, we were talking leading up to this fight how Anderson always wanted to fight a clone of himself. They really are a lot alike in the showmanship and the talent and the way they fight. And uh, you really saw that in the first round. Any other questions? I cannot stress this enough. Thank you, Australia. Thank you so much, you guys. See you next time.